Hello and welcome to News Now. I'm your host, Taylor Inman. We're going over this week's biggest headlines and what's coming up for the Flathead Valley. This week I spoke with folks at the Whitefish Theater Company about their production of Misery. We chat about the fun and thrills the cast had bringing the Stephen King novel to life on stage. But first, here are some headlines. U.S. Senator John Tester last week sent a letter pressing Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg on Big Fork's historic Bridge Street Bridge which authorities closed in January after a troubling inspection revealed safety concerns. Writing to Buttigieg, Tester stressed the importance of the Bridge Street Bridge in Big Fork, saying that it is critically important to the economic success and safety of the community. He said the town is one of Montana's most popular summer tourism destinations and that he is concerned about how the closure will affect people's ability to travel to and from Big Fork's main street. The bridge was closed January 31st after an inspection by the State Department of Transportation determined that the bridge can no longer reliably carry traffic or large numbers of pedestrians. Built in 1912 and designed with a 75-year expected lifetime, the bridge has long outlived the builder's estimations, but the clock appears to have finally run out on the historic structure. Now Flathead County officials are scrambling to come up with temporary solutions as citizens await the construction of a new bridge. Though MDT was scheduled to begin work in 2023, the project was later delayed until 2026, citing lack of funding. Tester wrote about his work on the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which appropriates funds each year for the Federal Highway Administration's Bridge Formula Program. He said Montana will receive $45 million this year through the program, $6.75 million of which must be used for off-system bridges like the Bridge Street Bridge. He said the repair or replacement of the Bridge Street Bridge would be an excellent use of Montana's Bridge Formula Program funding. Tester called on Buttigieg to move quickly to assist the Montana Department of Transportation with any technical assistance needed for the project. Federal highway and bridge money is delivered to Governor Greg Gianforte and the Montana Department of Transportation, who is then in charge of working with local stakeholders to deliver specific projects like bridge replacements. A skier was airlifted from backcountry terrain near Essex on February 17th after they were seriously injured in a large avalanche set off by their partner from the slopes above. The two bear air rescue helicopter extracted the partially buried skier who was swept by the avalanche more than 50 yards through a group of trees. Two bear crews met the alert ambulance at Hungry Horse Reservoir and the skier was later hospitalized at Logan Health Medical Center in Kalispell with serious injuries. The accident occurred at about 4.30 p.m. in the Marion Lake area of the Flathead Range south of Glacier National Park at the tail end of a long day of backcountry skiing, according to a preliminary incident report from the Flathead Avalanche Center. The party of two had skied more than 7,000 vertical feet earlier in the day, including a descent of 7,690 foot Mount Adams. On their ascent of Adams, the duo met up with another couple and and skied the mountain's east face as a group. The avalanche occurred on a northeast face with a steep convex entry. The first skier made it to the bottom without incident and stopped below the run, but the slope gave way after their partners started the descent. Debris from the avalanche knocked the skis off the victim, buried their legs, and caused injuries to their arm, chest, and back. One skier with the group stayed on the ridge where there was cell service while the other two skied down to the buried victim. After determining a self-rescue was too dangerous, the group alerted the rescue response at about 4.50 p.m. by using an in-reach satellite communicator and their cell phone. The avalanche danger for Saturday was rated as moderate and the weather was mostly sunny. Preliminary reports show the slab avalanche likely failed on old snow and released at roughly 7,100 feet on a convex shaded slope. Members of both groups were equipped with avalanche safety gear and radios. In reporting the incident to the Avalanche Center, members of the group cited complacency and fatigue as factors and said they were caught off guard after having skied from the top of Mount Adams earlier in the day. The center's incident report noted the party appropriately descended the slope one at a time, though the skier caught in the avalanche did not stop in a safe zone. Otherwise, the center said their rescue response was excellent. Two close calls with avalanches occurred nearby on the same day, the center warned. Flathead avalanche forecasters planned to visit the accident site that following Monday and completed a report later in the week. Area wine lovers can catch a direct flight to Northern California's wine country from Glacier Park International Airport beginning on May 1st. Avello Airlines, which began operating seasonal service from Flathead County to Los Angeles last year, expects to run back and forth to the Charles M. Schultz Sonoma County Airport twice weekly. Introductory one-way fares will start at $78, according to airline officials, though additional fees may apply. Located in Santa Rosa, California, the Charles M. Schultz Sonoma County Airport is within drivable distance from Sacramento and San Francisco. 
The route will operate on Wednesdays and Saturdays, the airline officials said. The company expects to service it with Boeing Next Generation 737 aircraft. Glacier Park International Airport Director Robert Kowski described the route as giving Montanans ever more options to explore the country. Avello Airlines serves 48 destinations across the United States with a fleet of 16 Boeing Next Generation 737 aircraft. The Whitefish Theater Company's production of Misery begins tonight and runs from February 23rd through the 25th, February 29th, and March 1st through the 2nd. I spoke with artistic director Kim Kruger and actor David Blair, who plays the part of Paul Sheldon in the stage adaptation of this iconic thriller. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for cool. joining me today. Thank you yeah. for having us. Yeah, thank you for... And welcome to pleasure. the theater. Oh my yeah. gosh, it's, it's so cool here. Um, so yeah, how did you guys land on Misery for, for this production? Uh, well, I saw, um, when I was trying to find shows for the season, I saw that the, William Goldman, who wrote The Princess Bride, had adapted Stephen King's Misery with Stephen King's Blessing. And I was like, oh my goodness, I, I, since I'm such a Stephen King fan, I was like, I've got to, I've got to see if I can get the rights to this show. Um, and, and so I, I, I was a little hesitant though because um, a lot of times when you try to adapt a book to a, a film or a film to a play or a book to a play, it doesn't work out. You know, so um, it, it very rarely does actually. So when I read this one though, I was like, oh, it's really good. It sticks really, it's a great combination of books slash what happens in the movie. Um, so yeah, that's how we, we happened on it. And it helps that, that William Goldman also wrote the screenplay for Misery. Yes. So he basically adapted his, his own screenplay into a stage play. Mm -hmm. So you'll recognize a lot of the dialogue from the film is in the is in the play as well. Um, there's a few adjustments, right? Like in the book, mm -hmm. they chop they chop his, his foot, feet his, his feet, foot off his yeah. foot off. In the movie, they hobble, and in the play, they it, it, he gets hobbled. Yeah, yeah. So there's but there's it's, it, there's a real great crossover between the two. Yeah, David, you play mm -hmm. Paul Sheldon. Yes. Um, what did you do to prepare for this character? You said you're a really big horror fan. So. Um, yeah, I, uh, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I sound like a like a dumb actor, like d dumb, but I, I didn't really do much to prepare for it at all. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> especially when it's <laughs> good answer, David. <laughs> I, I think, I think I can help you with that. Yes, please, thank <laughs> because, you. Because, because. Um, <laughs> How do I prepare Kim? Tell yeah, me. yeah. Well, I, I think a lot of it is is this is so this character is so much in the moment work. So we spent so much time just on little teeny details mm -hmm. um, because he wakes up in a room. The last thing he remembers, he was driving, and so and so it's a moment to moment work. And so what, there's not much preparation you can do beforehand. You know, except maybe to read the book, but you know, for this particular show, because it has to be about his relationship with Annie Wilkes and the moments that it's a cat, cat and mouse game almost right away. Um, so it has to be very um, honest. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, yeah, to answer your question, I, I, I kind of took it as like, how did I prepare before the audition? But like, I guess preparing for the, the character, Kim nailed it. It's all in rehearsal and under Kim's direction and ha finding chemistry with Serena who plays Annie Wilkes through rehearsals and talking things out, being honest and grounded in the situation. Is it hard to build that tension or does the situation just lend itself to being? You know, it's, it's, it's both, I think. It, it's in the text, it's in the situation, but also as, as actors, you have to portray that, and so you do have to like manufacture those emotions. And you mentioned that you've known all the people in this cast for a really long time, as well as Ken. Um, Everyone except for Jesse, the, um, our, our sheriff, who's oh, okay. amazing. Yeah, he's, 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 this is his first show he's done. He, I think he said he did one in high school. Yeah. And I think he says he's been to a play like once. He went to Chicago, the, <laughs> yeah. the musical Chicago. And that's like <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So he is like the closest to a theater virgin as, you know, <laughs> we, we can, you could possibly get all this. But he's, a, he's actually, don't tell him this, but he's kind of a natural. Yeah. <laughs> he's so great as, yeah. as, as Buster. It's just been so much fun. And he's just jumped in with both feet like, yeah, I guess I'm going to be in a play. <laughs> you know? yeah. That's kind of like, oh, what do we do now? You know? Yeah. Well, good for him for having 
that attitude, but also like it's probably cool for him to be around all these other actors and you have you know have a lot of experience. So yeah, we're, we're having a good time together. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 so good. Is it tough to work with such a small cast? No, no. Um, it's it's. I think it's really cool working with a small cast. You get more individual attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and, I love your work. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I love attention. <laughs> um, it's I, yeah. I don't know. It, the, the, there's like a there's something intimate about it, and and especially like this story in particular, where like there's a lot of emotions flying around this story. <laughs> mm. um, a lot of things happen, and and I think that it's it's. Yeah, it's a fun. It's fun working with a small cast. Yeah. In that regard. Uh, Kim, I wanted to ask about. Um, so this is a thriller. Yes. Have you directed many thrillers? Is it something you enjoy? Um, yes. I. I, I, I <laughs> everyone's always I always like get to the point where they're like, okay, so what's going to happen next year? And even when I like, I did not want to direct Elf the musical. And then by the time we got to it, I was like, I'm directing Elf the musical. Yes. <laughs> so I always get into whatever I'm going to direct. Um, but this one is, is, is really just special because of my love of Stephen King. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and just, I think, the, the intimacy of, of what we're going to create here with this set. As you can see, like, it's kind of like a house, and you don't get the full house, so you can see in all these rooms. But there is definitely some tension. Is like she puts on, she goes, and she leaves, and he has to get it out and come down and go into the kitchen and get things, and then he hears her coming back, and, and so the timing of it all. Um, with, with them, like, again, just chasing each other um, has really, really made this fun and challenging, so. Oh, cool. Yeah, that set design aspect is really neat. Um, so it sounds like it's going to be almost like a dollhouse kind of a thing mm -hmm. where you can see her leave and yeah. see you struggle. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's not really written in the text. That's Kim's direction. She, she I'll just speak for you for two seconds. Yes, please do. She, she wanted to show the, the moments that you don't get to see in the, like, in the film. Mm -hmm. Or that, that it's not even really written in, in, the, in the text, per se. But like, those, those quiet moments of just reality of like, you know the, these people just in this house and and Annie reading something really awful and like showing this moment before she comes in to the room and like you know just showing the real reality of of this set and of the of the moments and I think um, that what's that's what makes it scary too yeah is you will like literally you will be saying Oh, hurry, Paul, hurry, here she comes, because you can see her as he's trying to get, yeah. you know? Ooh, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, suspenseful. yeah, yeah, Kim's crafted some amazing moments in this show. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I guess that brings me to one of my last questions about Misery. Tell me about what you guys enjoy about bringing this to stage, since you guys are both big fans of the film and Stephen King. Mr. King, I just hope I do you well. <laughs> if you're watching this, come see it. And we love you. <laughs> Uncle Steve. He's Stevie. a big fan of the show. Yeah. He is, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that's, you know, getting to, for, for to, you know, everyone has their authors that they love. And I love several, but probably no, no one more than Stephen King. I've read everything. Yeah. Every single book. So I think that's what I'm really enjoying about doing the show is just getting to do... Um, with my with some great actors, great crew, you know, um, getting to do a story that I just find scary and fun. Yeah. <laughs> it is really scary and fun. What about you, David? Um, yeah, I mean, misery is is so iconic, and it is a part of culture. Annie Wilkes is culture. Like she she is one of the most iconic villains of all time so um it actually says in the beginning of this show uh, in the script and i think it says annie you see annie wilkes she is unlike any person on this planet or any other Ooh. yeah <laughs> it's a great it's a great way to describe her she is yeah she's iconic and 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 to be in this show um 
is, is yeah, it just feels amazing. And I love Stephen King. Like, I echo all of the things that Kim said. Uh, let's talk about Annie's character just for a second. So, with it being such an iconic role, um, how do you give direction for that, to, to bring that out of somebody? Well, I, I, Serena brings a, a lot of that to the table herself. Um, she's a great actress. And, uh, and, and again, you always start, you start from doing a play as doing building blocks, you know? We start just sitting down doing table reads and reading the script. And then from there, we just, we do a lot of talking about what's going on here, what she wants, um, what she's trying to get out of this moment. Um, what does she want from Paul, you know? Um, and then we talk about like where we think she's come from, um, what we think her past was, you know? Um, and so, you know, but I think most of it just comes from the text and comes out of Serena. Um, she just has really found Annie and she is scary as hell. Yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you is. that. She is really <laughs> scary at times. Yeah. And at the, at the same time though, she's found something really interesting where you, you, you almost, she's sympathetic at times too. So that yeah. makes you, it, it, it's kind of like a, a Anthony, it was Anthony Hopkins in Silence of the Lambs. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. love Hannibal Lechner, but, yeah. but you're scared of him. But he's so smart and creative and, 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 and so you, you have this love-hate relationship with him. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with Annie. Okay, what Serena's created is, is somebody that you, you feel sympathy for at times, but then you're just, oh, I don't know if I feel that much sympathy she's scaring me right now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's a great dichotomy that, that Serena found. A hallmark of a good villain. Yeah. There's a little bit yeah. of sympathy underneath all that. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody that you care for and you care about, but they're also terrifying. Yeah, yeah. There's moments yeah. where I don't have to really act because Serena comes at me and it's scary. And, and then there are moments where I feel really bad for her. We talked a lot about like, is it called Stockholm syndrome? Yeah. You know, where you're, you're kidnapped and you, and you start sympathizing with the other person, the person that's your captor and they sympathize with you. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of what happens here with these two. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys do lots of other cool shows here um, from the fall through the spring. Uh, how many shows do you guys do per season? So we do five main stage shows. So that's when you have, that, that's what this is right now. So we'll have the full cast, the set, light, sound, all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so we do five of those a year. One of them is a musical. And then we have what's called the Black Curtain series. It's like a reader's theater. So mm -hmm. those are great for people who just want to get their feet wet um, or explore a really, really great script. Um, it's a big audition still. It's a two week process. Um, there's no costumes or anything like that, but they're great stories. And um, it's kind of more controversial sometimes scripts. Scripts will make you think a little bit more. Maybe it might be a main stage at some point, um, but maybe it's just something we just want to hear read and have people listen to. And then we have a music series um, that we tr I try really hard to get in um, things that you don't get in the valley necessarily. Mm -hmm. So, um, like we have Eileen Ivers, who was the, the fiddle player for Riverdance for like 10 years or something like that. She's amazing and she's coming with her band. We've got flamenco dancers. We've got, um, you know, next year we're going to have a comedian, you know. So, um, so just, just really different things. And we do outreaches too with area schools um, and with the, um, like the veterans home. So during the day they get to come in for free and, and experience a different kind of um, a music that they wouldn't get to see otherwise. Oh, that's so neat. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, fun. but the kids love that as well. Oh, they do. Um, so tell me a little bit about the audition process for these shows. Oh, cool. Yeah, the audition process is um, we have, um, it's open auditions and you don't have to prepare anything. So you just, yeah, which is great. Which we love. And yeah. as a community theater, you know, member, we, we love that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why you love that. What's the, what's the difference? I don't know. I feel like whenever I've had to prepare for an audition with like a monologue or something, because I've auditioned for several things in my, in my career. Um, I don't know. It's just always hard. There's something harder about it and nerve wracking and like, I don't know. There's something um, clean slatey about coming in and just doing a doing a cold reading, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and everyone's on the same page, and I don't know. There's just there's like something equalizing about that. Yeah, that's interesting. So you guys get all sorts of talented people from the community in these shows. David, what would you tell to somebody to inspire them to come out and audition if they're interested? 
Oh my gosh. Um, um, yeah, if you've ever had, if you've ever wanted to act or, or you know, be a part of a theater production, um, the, really the only thing holding you back is yourself because this, this theater company is so inclusive and embracing of, of everybody. It is the community. Um, so if you've ever wanted to explore that or maybe you did it, maybe you've acted in the past and you fell out of it and you want to get back into it. Um, and we have lots of different ways you can volunteer here. Yeah. You can work in the box office. You can work back, you know, if you're a builder, you can help build the set. You know, you can work in costumes if you know how to sew. You can run lights and sound. We'll teach you how to do it. If you want to learn how to stage manage, you can, you know, learn how to stage manage and become part of that. Um, so we have lots of ways for people to volunteer and become part of our family. All right. So the Whitefish Theatre Company is putting on their production of Misery February 22nd through the 25th and 29th and March 1st through 2nd. Come check it out. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Read these full stories at dailyinterlake.com. Glacier National Park archaeologist Brent Rowley is giving a talk at the Northwest Montana History Museum on fe February 26th. He will discuss park history from the end of the Ice Age to today, focusing on the culture of indigenous people, megafauna, and the rise and fall of the buffalo. The event is free to attend and starts at 7 p.m. There are also many chances next week to catch local musicians live, like Eric Allen, who is playing at the Firebrand Lounge on February 28th, starting at 6 p.m. Remember, you can find all kinds of community events by checking out our event calendar at dailyinterlake.com slash events. Thanks for joining us. News Now is a podcast from the Daily Interlake. We're proud to be the largest independent newsroom in Montana and the oldest paper in the Valley. Consider becoming a subscriber to support our work. Call Circulation at 406-755-7018 or go to the Subscribe tab in the top right corner of our website. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel to never miss an episode of the pod. Everybody stay safe and have a great week.